Hey there, Math Moment Makers. John here from Make Math Moments, and I want to share with you an idea uh, that uh, Kyle and I, Kyle Pierce and I, uh, the other co-host of the Make Math Moments podcast, um, heard about in a conference that actually helped change our trajectories of our careers. Um, it helped morph us into the teachers uh, that we are and that we practice to be with our students. And uh, that has to deal with this one thing. Let me put this up on the screen right here. Uh, right now, coming up on the screen, here we go, uh, is this idea of uh, being the guide and and not the hero. And sometimes we uh, sometimes think that you know the, the the teacher is the center of the stage, this the hero of the story. We're not the hero. We're the guide. And what I mean by that is Kyle and I went to a, a conference a number of years ago, and we met with the one of the people that works at Pixar, Pixar Studios, that makes like Finding Nemo and, and other other movies. And they talked about story. And they talked about this thing that so many of our stories that we know, uh, TV shows, uh, ideas uh, from books, like they, all of these characters and these adventure stories all follow the exact same story arc. And that that person shared with us that story arc is called the hero's journey. And the hero's journey, if your English teachers uh, kind of know about this already, but this was new to us a number of years ago at the time. And I was trying to wrap my head around the hero's journey because this was very familiar to me, but I wasn't sure exactly why. And let me explain that and in, in, uh, that that concept to you. Is I put up here on the screen is that the hero's journey. Uh, I put it in a graph. You know, we are math teachers. We uh, we had to view this in a graph, whereas the English teachers would call this a cycle, and this is because it repeats. But here's the hero's journey in a nutshell: is that um, the the x-axis here is uh, time of the story, time of the journey, time of the book, time of the movie, time of the the TV show, um, and tension is up on our vertical axis. Is tension that the character feels or the audience feels while this story is going on, and uh, what happens is every story, every adventure story uh, starts exactly the same way. So I want you to picture your favorite adventure uh, kind of coming of age type story uh, that this adventure story th always starts the same way is that in the beginning, the the character is in their world and then all of a sudden their world starts to change. They're set off the path. They're on the now the journey. And the character, the main character, has to battle the forces of evil. It's it's in every single one uh, of uh, these these stories that you can think of, or these movies that you can think of. It is go battling the forces of evil that the character learns about themselves. They they learn about the skills that they have, um, new skills. The that, that will help overcome the climax of the end. And it's during this battling the forces of evil, they come over this, this immense crisis and struggle. And it's where they meet the guide. And like, if I'm thinking, and I have to go back to one of my favorite adventure stories, you were talking Star Wars. And if you think of the original Star Wars, the 1977 movie Star Wars with... Um, Luke Skywalker meets Obi-Wan Kenobi along this journey where he learns about the ways of the Jedi and he under, uh, you know, learns about himself uh, so that he can battle at the end and win, you know, blow up the Death Star. And it was, you know, blowing up the Death Star at the end of the movie is is only awesome because of the struggle that Luke had to go through. And, and when you could substitute Death Star for any other, you know, movie and, and Luke for any other character that you can think of on these kind of adventure stories, because they're all exactly the same way, they got to end at that climax when that big thing happens. And it was because of the struggle that the character went through that it made it awesome. Like, you can imagine that if, if Luke flew and blew up the Death Star right at the beginning of the movie, you didn't see him struggle. It was just too easy. It wouldn't have the same effect. It was because of the struggle that it made it so worthwhile. And, you know, what happens at the end of all of these uh, shows and TVs and books, the character will return home to their world and, and it's kind of everything's kind of wrapped up. But, you know, the tension is not fully relieved at the end because the character uh, is going to be set off on a new path or they've brought with them new skills. So it's not exactly the, the back to the beginning as it was because they're a different person. So this was explained to me in, in terms of Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo actually follows this exact same story arc at the time. But there's lots of lots of uh, stories and movies that that follow this pattern. 
Um, but I recognize this. Where, where this was familiar for me was that this isn't just a hero's journey. This is also a learner's journey. This is this is the process we all go through when we learn something of value. Um, we go through the struggle of learning something of value, and it's through that struggle part. You know, when you're battling the forces of evil, when you're learning something new, that you're attaching value to your learning. Um, I've often uh, used this example. I tried to learn how to play the guitar and, you know, learning how to play the guitar and getting the chords right and having your fingers hurt and going through all of that struggle uh, just is is pretty good. It's tough. But then all of a sudden when you play that song for the first time, like it's just, ah, it was worth it, right? Like you have this immense feeling that all that struggle he went through attached value to playing that first song. And all these guitar uh, people, I'm sure, will remember the first song that they learned on their own and, and, and played themselves because of that struggle they went through. Like, we we go through this and when we learn anything, and that's why it's a learner's journey and not just a hero's journey. And I want to share how this has changed our careers uh, in mathematics because when you think of math class and and you think of teaching mathematics the way I taught for 10 years, a number of years, the way I was learned mathematics, the way I thought mathematics needed to be taught, it kind of looked like that typical come in, take up the homework kind of, here's your lesson uh, format. I'm gonna put that lesson format up on the same tension time graph right now up on the screen. So if you look behind me right now, you're seeing kind of math class, uh, the kind of four step process of what math class would look like. You take up homework, you give out the definitions of the formulas, you do examples, and then you give out more homework, right? Like that's the process I taught for so many years of what math class is supposed to look like. Now, if you put it up on the tension time graph, what happens is t time is now time in the lesson and tension is tension the students feel during the lesson. And you can see that tension rises really quickly in this in this scenario because students are like, I'm not sure how this is gonna go. This is a new topic. Uh, okay, uh, let's, and this is where the teacher is like telling exactly what's gonna happen, right? It's like, okay, this is our, our, our plan and everyone's getting a little bit nervous of like, oh, is this gonna be on the test? That kind of thing. But what happens is why you see this kind of falling off right away is because that is the teacher just saying, you know what, uh, I'm just gonna show you exactly what to do. That's the examples. That's that's us saying, don't worry kids, uh, math class you know, always has played out the same way. I'm gonna rush to this algorithm. I'm gonna show you this algorithm that is gonna take away all your worry because it's done the same way every single time. I'm gonna make sure I do all the examples that are on the homework and then those homework questions turn into test questions. And for a lot of kids, that tension falls away because they know the math game. That's the way math gets played. And uh, for some kids, you can argue they're stuck at the top because math is a struggle for them. And math will always, you know, sometimes there's always a struggle for them and they're kind of stuck in tension land at the top. Um, and so what, why I wanted to bring this up is because since, since recognizing that we're really on this learner's journey, like, like when we just rush to this algorithm and we teach, 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 teach and tell, 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 what we're really doing is we're robbing, we're robbing the students of attaching value to their learning. Like when, this is why kids say like, why do I have to learn this? Is this on the test? Like they're asking questions like that because they're not seeing value in the lesson itself. And it's, it's when we started to change, we were to take this, this model of math class and we actually flip it over to the hero's journey model of math class. So they follow this path instead. This is where our students started to attach value to their learning, right? So you've got, you've got kids who are staying curious longer. They're going through this productive struggle stage. This is battling the forces of evil. Like if I can get my students to, you know, immerse themselves in mathematics themselves before I tell them mathematics, uh, then that's them attaching value to their learning. Like before we were robbing them of that value. Like now the students are going, okay, I see why this is important. I saw why this skill is going to be important because I was immersed in it and it and the, this rule that we come out helped me figure this out faster, or I saw this more efficient way, or I now made these two connections together. Like that happens in the struggle stage. And we're the guide in that stage. We're not the hero. We're the Obi-Wan Kenobi that's helping our students along this pathway. And, and it's, it is only at the, at the very top, you know, where the tension's so high and kids are either, I am really struggling. I don't know how to do this because we gave them this problem that, you know, made them feel that way. Then we can go, Hey, let's, let's look at this strategy. This strategy helps a little bit differently. This might be a little bit more efficient for you. 
or we're going to connect two strategies together because you did it this way and you did it this way. But now we've got this nice format of, of how these two things work together. Like when I teach and started teaching through productive struggle this way, this is what changed my career. This is this is what changed Kyle's career. It was all of the things that we've been looking at and putting it all together so that we can make students attach value to their learning and actually think during math class instead of just mimic during math class. And so that is what our kind of journey has been about. It's really we're taking, you know, this style of math class where we just tell, 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 and we flip it over to this model of math class, which is a productive struggle model of math class. We call that the real flip class. And it's not, it's not a go watch a video kids and come back and we'll solve problems in class. That's not what I mean. I'm not talking about the flip classroom that, you know, was in the news and, and people were saying like, Hey, we got to do this flip classroom. That's not what I'm saying. The flip classroom is flipping the order of when students actually do the thinking and they should do the thinking first to attach value to their learning. And then we summarize and we make notes later. Uh, instead. And and that's a little different. And that's what's changed our careers in mathematics and, and made such an enjoyable time. And that's that's what I wanted to share here with you and, and is about the how how uh, heroes teaching math through a hero's journey can change your career, but also change uh, how kids feel and view mathematics. And I, I also just want to bring up uh, how we do that is specifically, because that's the next question, right, John? It's like, how do I do that? And one way we're doing that is uh, through our problem-based lessons that we're creating. Like Kyle and I are, you know, working uh, to create new lessons for you to use in your classroom and how to use those lessons. Um, so if you are heading on over to our site and head over to uh, teach and down here to uh, learn about our tasks, if this is new to you, we kind of give you an overview of each task that there's a teacher guide and there's a spark tab, uh, which kind of gives you the kind of prompt to get your students prompted so that you can do that productive struggle and get them wondering and noticing and then estimating and following the curiosity pathway. Uh, and then the idea is to, to be able to generate some sense making so that they can attach value to their learning. So you can do that over here. Uh, we've got lo uh, lots of tasks. They're all for free to use with your, your students. Check those out. But uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, show that with you. I wanted to talk about the hero's journey and how that can change your career, but also your students as well. And uh, you can uh, get uh, 30 days free inside of our academy, which gives you access to all of the teacher guides as well. So uh, looking forward to connecting with you. Let me know your thoughts on the hero's journey because uh, I'm sure you have some. Have you been doing a hero's journey in your class and not knowing it was the hero's journey? Uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I will catch up with you soon. So uh, take care.